Hey, hi. Do you love Ireland? Do you wish you and dream of going to Ireland someday? If so, you're in luck because tonight is all about Ireland with a visit to Emer Coughlin from Celtic Hearts Travel. So stick around. And as a thank you for stopping by, we are going to give you a gift. Our Journey to Ireland 100 Insiders Tips to Make Your Trip Magical. I will put the link right below. And if you want that guide, just click away. So I'm Janine Queenan, and you found your way to Janine and Amy's Travel TV Live. And you'll notice no Amy. Sadly, <laughs> Amy had a family emergency, so it's just Emer and I, but I promise you, we both can talk <laughs> and we both <laughs> like to tell stories. So we'll have a lot of fun. So we know it'll be a while before we can travel again. And until that time, we are traveling around the world with our friends to, talk, to bring you to special destinations. And tonight, it's Ireland. So I want to say hi to Emer. Thanks for coming on. Hey, Janine. Thank hey. you for having me. I'm excited to be here. And as you all can hear, Emer is from Ireland. So if you have any questions for her, just make sure you post them below. And I'm sure she'll be happy to answer them. Give us a couple likes, some loves, whatever. And uh, let's get started. So, so let's say a little toast. I know you have something special you'd like to toast with tonight. <laughs> Uh, so I just happened to have made one of these. This is a um, a drum shambo gunpowder gin and fever tree tonic. Um, I know most people associate Ireland with Guinness and whiskey, but gin has become one of the fastest growing like distillery industries in Ireland. And even Jemison do their own gin. And this particular gin is from County Leitrim and it's called drum shambo gunpowder Irish gin. And it is delicious. It's infused with all of these botanicals. And then if you're going to have this gin, you need to have a good tonic to go with it. And this is Fever Tree Tonic, which is actually made in the UK, but it's a really premium tonic. And you can get both of these at Total Wine. I love the name. Like gunpowder. You know, right? That's really cool. Yeah, there's some cool gins now, like up in Belfast, uh, that one of their favorites is Jawbox, it's called. And then Dingle have their own gin. Jemison have their own gin and they call that one Mayhem and Madness. Oh, that's nice. So yeah. why oh, all of a sudden that, oh, cheers to you. Mm -hmm. Then my little glass, I I got this in Turkey. This is like a handmade. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, right? That. So toast to you. Cheers. Slancha to your health, Slancha. as they say in Ireland. Um, so why the change? Like what, wh why all of a sudden gin? I'm just curious because what, you're right. Whiskey is, and when we went to Ireland, I just want to say, I also have my, you two shirt on for tonight. Ooh, love you too. <laughs> the Joshua Tree Tour. I had something Irish on. <laughs> we went, we had a chance to go see them in Croke Park um, when they did the 20th anniversary. Or was it 30th, 20th anniversary? So it was awesome. But anyway. Yeah, they are, they are awesome. awesome. Croke Park is like the best venue to see them in. It's so Irish. Oh my gosh. Space. It was it, it was electric too. Just the atmosphere yeah. in what made me laugh. There were so many people from the Northeast there. And from other countries too. From the Northeast of the United, United States. States. Yeah. Tons, tons <laughs> and tons. Plus, plus people from everywhere. Like there were some folks behind us from Finland because they, they weren't playing in Finland. But anyway, so let's get talking about Ireland. So yep. first, who is this sassy lassie? Oh, <laughs> that's Dervla. That's our my partner in crime, the other classy lassie. Um, so we're Celtic Hearts Travel, as you know, and Dervla and I are actually both from Dublin, Ireland, and that's the River Liffey right behind us, um, which is the, the river that runs through Dublin, the Sniffy Liffey, we used to call it as kids, because when the tide was low, it stunk. It stunk. <laughs> but uh, Dervla's on vacation this week, and she can't join me, but uh, we're both from Dublin, and we're the classy lassies, and so we have the business together, and sh we miss her. She's great. I said sassy, because you guys yeah, are that's sassy. Fine. Sassy too. <laughs> More sassy than classy. <laughs> so I know you you get you go back you and you have the chance to bring people with you to Ireland, which is really mm. nice because it's that personal touch and you know so many special, magical, secret things. Yeah. So yeah. we you sent us some pictures and we'll just kind of go through it and um you tell me what's going on. So first of all, cheap, right? Because <laughs> everywhere. everywhere, everywhere, right? So 
Tell it. So okay. I, and I have to say that because we drove quite a bit the last time we were in Ireland and we, there are a lot of sheep. Is it true there are more sheep in Ireland than people? Yes, absolutely. Is it? There's, yeah, there's sheep up and like, um, I don't know if you went through the Burren, um, you know, while on your tours through Ireland, it's just that barren countryside up on the mountains. It's just, it's all just stone, rock, nothing grows up there. And that's where all the sheep are. Right. Um, and I wish it, I had a video of us trying to drive down the road and there was a whole flock of sheep. We couldn't get them out of the <laughs> But anyway, this picture here, I just wanted to say, we went through to a sheepdog trial. I don't know if you've done one of those, Janine, mm -hmm. but if you go to Ireland and you get a chance to do one, it's amazing. These uh, border collies, fabulous. Like the guy just uses a whistle or a a noise and they respond and they you know they they do these uh demonstrations it's unbelievable oh really and i mean it's such an important thing for farmers right to be able to have them in because they yeah. really do wander around quite a bit and also in the burren i was saying to you the farmers can't really get up there they can't walk you know you can't like it's the terrain is really rough so the dogs are able to go up and bring the flock down oh wow yeah it was such a treat it was such a treat that, that's cool. So while we're on animals, I will hold on. <laughs> Wrong way. That's okay. Live. It's live. So one, um, one of the things I know people like to do is a hawk demonstration, correct? Mm -hmm. So tell me yes. about this. Okay. So this actually is an owl. Oh, it's an, can, owl. <laughs> that's an owl. But I'll tell you that there is uh, the hawk uh, demonstration. So we stayed um, in Park Nasilla Resort in County Kerry. It's right on the coast. It's actually on the water. And they have a, an amazing falconry, um, you know, a whole falconry display that they put on and everything. But the day that we were there, it was raining so <laughs> heavily that we couldn't go out on the grounds to do. We had a tour planned and a boat and everything. So the falconry guy brought the owls inside for us. Um, and this guy, this owl here is called Fatso. Oh. He's huge. Oh my God. Um, but they he did like five different owls, all different types. And all of our, this is one of our clients. They were all able to hold the owls and he explained everything about them and they would fly around the hall. Um, and it was such a great thing, you know, for people because they really wanted to do falconry, but this was even cooler. They got to meet, to meet them in person. Right. Oh, that's neat. So let's talk about the weather. <laughs> so, um, because, so I'm just going to put a picture of me here. And Ooh, this is the nice. middle. It's a cool picture, isn't it? That That's the middle of the summer. That is july and maybe august mm -hmm. and i have on a coat a long sleeve shirt long pants socks mm -hmm. shoes yeah. so, so it's not warm it, it no no, no. And it, i mean and I, even in the summertime it's like i mean if it, a heat wave would be for us in the 80s right uh in ireland you know it's usually like in the 70s 80s in the evening time you'll always wear like a sweater or a sweatshirt and you'll always bring a rain jacket yes always and it does rain so I know everyone says, oh, I know it rains, but it really does rain, <laughs> right? And it I ended up sideways. It's sideways. I ended up buying a wool sweater. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's no joke in the middle of August to wear. So not to scare people away because it's beautiful. And that's why it's so green yeah, <laughs> because it, it rains and, so much. I know that the thing is too, that the rain really doesn't spoil, you know, you, once you have a rain jacket and, you know, maybe Wellington boots or you're wrapped up, it doesn't spoil anything because the Irish people are so used to rain that they're not going to let that stop anything. So if you can't do this, you'll do this. Right. And they'll always, you know, like pivot and do something else. And find something to do, like go to the pub. <laughs> right? uh, yes. <laughs> so you share this picture. Um, let's see. Is this, what's this? Well, that's Dirty Nellie's. So that that uh, that is a famous pub. It's in County Clare. It's right beside Bunratty Castle, and I will say that Dirty Nellies serve one of the best Irish coffees that you're going to get in Ireland. They have live music every day. They have seafood, like they have like you know mussels, fish and chips, the, all that pub fare. 
they have a, a session every day with live music and they have the very best Irish coffees. And if you're going to visit Bunrati Castle, it's literally next door. Is it really? There you go. There you go. So, so how do you stay? So how do you find an authentic Ireland versus, you know, there's a lot. Of, I mean, everywhere you go, there are a lot of tourist traps. So how do you avoid that? Like, how, because I know the, the dream of a lot of, especially people in the Northeast, because we, we are of Irish ancestors, we have Irish ancestors to go into a pub and meet people. And so first of all, do Irish folks want that? <laughs> do they want us to come in? And secondly, how do you find an authentic experience without getting kind of sucked into something less, less so? Classy lassies. <laughs> yeah, go with the classy lassies, exactly. <laughs> But, you know, the thing is that any of those, I call them plastic paddy tours, you know, any of those <laughs> That's good. packets, they are because, you know, everybody wants to see this. And there are certain things you want to see in Ireland. Of course, you want to kiss the Blarney Stone because that really is a unique experience. And you definitely want to see the Cliffs of Moher mm -hmm. um, and you want to do Dublin, you know, and there's other Rock of Cashel and so many beautiful Connemara. Like you, I could talk all day, but it's sprinkling these extra experiences in between um, off the beaten path. And I think that, um, you know, if you use, if you have a really, really good, we had a driver, of course, and we spoke with the driver beforehand. And so any area that we were going into, Dervil and I researched, and we would know looking at stuff, you know, yeah, we're not going to go there because everybody's going there and just, just really, doing your homework and researching the best kept secrets right. and talking to people who are from Ireland and getting a really, really good supplier, which you guys work with anyway. So, so give us a secret. <laughs> Tell us one. Come on. It's just between us. And who else is here? Let me say hello to some people. We have <laughs> Roberta, Allison, Jeremy, Ali, Roy, Laney. So they all want to know. Emer. I don't give know. Us, I'd, have to, a, I'd have to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk about something else then. So I'm I'm going to put another picture of me in because I there's another picture I like a lot. So uh, just to talk about the natural beauty of the country and all these really. So this is the Giant's Causeway and the legend of Finn McCool and all that. But look yeah. at that and there are spots like that all over the country. What is your? Do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite place? Um, you know, I have to say, I really, really love, I've always loved to go to the cliffs of Moher, but I, we were very fortunate we were there, it wasn't packed. Um, it's just, you know, Dingle in County Kerry. I mean, have you been to Dingle? Uh, I haven't, sorry, my son just walked in. <laughs> hey. That's okay. That happens all the time. We're all we're all we're all doing virtual these days. But Dingle in County Kerry is this little fishing village. It's right on the water as well. I have um, been to Dingle. And, I'm sorry. I was distracted yeah, by him. Yes. That's okay. Um, and you know you can walk through that, and you know the, the scenery there. You know the seafood is amazing. The just the atmosphere, and I think going to some of the little towns like Kilkenny and. Um, you know, Cove and County Cork, like some of the little villages have the very best. Yes, so we hiked to the Cliffs of Moher yeah. from Doolin. Oh, Doolin's beautiful. And it was, it, it was a, it wasn't strenuous so much as terrifying mm -hmm. <laughs> because, mm -hmm. and the thing that made us laugh the most, we walked up this country lane and there was a little tiny gate with a sign on it that said, cliffs are dangerous, be <laughs> careful. That was it. <laughs> And I'm like here, there'd probably be like a giant glass fence and all of that. But no, they're like, look, we all know cliffs are dangerous. Yeah. Don't fall off it. Yeah. But, and it the, took us about two to earth. Yeah, it's like, that's it. We, it took us about two hours to get. And we were really only a few feet from the edge. And it was pouring rain. So maybe don't try that at home. But it was so no. worth it to come up on the cliffs of moor from the other side with not a soul around. It was amazing. There's, so, a, there's a little secret I let you into that I will let you into, but I'll tell you afterwards the name of the place. But we um, use this particular guest house and B&B &B all the time that is literally a field away from the Cliffs of Moor and oh, you can walk up and it's a secret way up and everything. So I'll tell you after. All right. And I won't tell any of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is, I know where this is, right? This is a Guinness. 
Yeah. Um, and it's also, I know it's, it was the, the, a man needs, I mean, a woman needs a fish. No, what is it? A woman, like a, a fish needs a yeah. bicycle, like a, I, say a that. Yeah. <laughs> right. But it's also in a U2 song. It's oh. in, yes. And on the Octon Baby Octon album. Baby album. Yes. But so what is this about and why is it in the Guinness factory? You know, I really don't know, quite honestly. I really don't know. They, they're they marketing. They've just had, I mean, you look at, you see, you know, um, all of the different uh, campaigns that they've had. They have the, the Pelic, the Toucan, and all of the different, you know, marketing stuff. But I actually honestly don't know, believe that or not. Yeah. Um, so I have been to the Guinness factory and so let me, I'd like to hear your opinion about it because I felt mm -hmm. that was one of the tourist traps. I'm not going to mm -hmm. lie, but yeah. we did take the concierge tour type of thing. And that was amazing. And that's kind of a secret thing too. I mean, people don't know a lot about, and if you love beer and you really want to know how to make, you know, do the perfect pour, I think it's worth it. Have you done that? Tour? Yeah, we've done it. We've done it a couple of times too. And we actually did it with our clients where you get, you know, where you pour your own pint and all of that right. and, and you get the little, the tasters and then you bring your pint up to the the uh, observation deck where you can look out on the city of Dublin and the day we were there you couldn't see your hand in front of your face oh. it was a miserable day right. but the, my clients like they loved it and I loved it I it was great to see everybody doing the perfect pour and and they're very patient and they tell everybody how to do it and there's like this little competition going on between your group and yeah um, and you get to drink that pint of guinness overlooking and and actually i will say even though i know it is a tourist trap janine it truly is one of the best pints of guinness you're ever going to get yeah i have to say it is different yeah. in ireland like yeah people say that course. but it's absolutely true there's mm -hmm. something and I don't, it could be the atmosphere it could be but i feel like it tastes different it's you know, it, it. you know what part of that is it is of course the atmosphere but uh, also it's not a, it's not exported it's fresh from the source the uh, the water in ireland is amazing like we drink from the faucet there's no you know you don't need to filter your water like this irish spring water everywhere right so That's, i think that makes a makes huge a difference, difference. It, it can stay at a particular temperature where it doesn't have to be you know, cool down or heat it up to export it. And unfortunately in the United States, so many people are not trained in the um, way of pouring a proper pint of Guinness. So when right. I see a picture of Guinness coming on a St. Patrick's Day, I'm just horrified. <laughs> You're like, no! You're like, so wrong. That's funny. But that, and I did, I learned that too. It has a lot to do with keeping it at the same temperature consistently. Absolutely. Yep. No, and no traveling. Like it's there, the source is there. And even though like you've been to the storehouse and you've been to the experience, you know, the, the real, the plant is right there. I mean, mm -hmm. the original Guinness plant and you know that, that they bought that for like one, pe one pound or one penny for an, a lifetime lease on that property. Yes, I, I did know that. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. So we were mentioning before that you bring groups. So I'd like to talk about this. So where is this fun picture? Oh, this is beautiful. Okay, so this, it was like one of the most <laughs> beautiful days that we had. It was, even though we have jackets and pants, but we were, it, this was the end. Um, Oh, Eric Kelly's on. He says, yeah, the gravity bar. That's absolutely right, Eric. The best pint of Guinness at the gravity bar. Um, so we were outside of Kinsale Harbour. I don't know if you've been to Kinsale Harbour in County Cork. It's absolutely beautiful. Another harbour town um, where you can walk around town. They have the best pubs, best restaurants, live music, great atmosphere. And it's right on the harbour. So it's, you know, fresh seafood and mussels. And this was just on the way out um, of uh, Kinsale where we took this photograph. Oh, very nice. I have not been to the Kinsale in Ireland, but I have been to the Kinsale pub in Boston. Does that count? Sure. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and we were talking about Jameson earlier. So no trip to Ireland is to complete. I mean, if you drink, of course, if you don't drink, but to go and visit one of the distilleries, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, so and where the one, is Jameson? Okay, so this one, this is the best one to go to. It's the it's the original. So you know, Jameson is also <clears throat> distilled in Dublin, but this is the original distillery in Middleton, County Cork. So it's actually really close to Kinsale, and 
you know, Blarney, it's all like, it's all around the same area and they do an amazing tasting as well. You do a fact, you do a tour and then there's a concierge tasting as well. Um, that's even, a, you know, a private group. They bring you through the whole distillery. You see the stills and they do gin. I was telling you that earlier. So there's another section that they've made for gin. But some of the whiskeys that you can buy at the Middleton Distillery, you cannot get anywhere else. Really? And you can have them shipped. And our clients, like, <laughs> when we got back on the bus, there was like 100 bottles of whiskey <laughs> because everybody, you know, and just unique souvenirs and unique whiskey that you will not, it's special edition. And um, there's a, a one of their whiskeys, a top shelf whiskey that it's really difficult to get. And they were able to buy a few bottles of it there. Oh, wow. And I have to say, I think my husband drank every whiskey, every type of whiskey. <laughs> yeah. He made it kind of yep. his kitchen to sample it all. Yeah. So. And I love, you know, they do it. They do a special um, at the end of your tour. You get you get a ticket when you go in. And at the end of the tour, everybody gets to goes to the bar to have a drink. And they have, you know, just one of their top shelf whiskeys neat or you can have one of their cocktails and it's so good it's it's jemison so if you want to make a really good mule type cocktail with jemison whiskey ginger uh, the same brand as this fever tree ginger beer mm. and squeeze a lime in there that delicious oh, nice yeah. that's nice we'll share that recipe later on okay okay so um let's talk about this so where is this Oh, that's that's Kinsale Harbor. Oh, is it? Yeah, that's beautiful. It's beautiful, isn't it? That's in the morning, um, and the boats are all there, and you can do a tour of the harbor as well. Um, in um, you know, in one of the boats, you can do a boat tour there, and it's absolutely beautiful. And there's a redhead red hair festival they do um, every year. Oh yeah, that's very close to Kinsale Harbor. And about five years ago, I went with a group of friends, and we all dyed our hair red. Yeah. Um, and it was amazing. Like redheads come from all over the world to be part of the festival. Oh, that's fun. When is that? Do you know what, what time of year? Um, it is in August, usually in August. Now it's not going to happen this year, but it, it's a great event. And they have even the, they had like uh, dogs that their hair was dyed. Oh, really? <laughs> that's excellent. Well, I read somewhere that only 3% of people in the world have red hair. So. Yeah. And, and it's a dying gene as well, which is very, very sad. I mean, what wouldn't you give for like real like pure red hair i know well i actually one of my very best friends she has red hair her sisters her mother her son it, the whole family so so out of the three percent one percent is that family no i'm kidding <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> i know but it is a dying gene they mm -hmm. say that um so that's interesting so there are tons of festivals speaking of that there are tons of festivals in ireland mm -hmm. do you get a chance to go back and go to any of them i know that they're like Halloween, there's Bram Stoker, there's yeah. all sorts of fun stuff. Have you been to well, any that yes. you really like? Listu and Barna is a, is a famous music yeah. festival. And of course, you know, every year in Doolin, I mean, they have music festivals all year round. And in Galway, have you been to Galway? Galway City? I have, yes. Yes, they have amazing festivals. Um, you know, there's the um, matchmaking one, which is... Um, oh, <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say Listo. I can't think of the name of it right now. But they have fest. This fest every every time you look around, there's a festival. Right. The, right. the Irish love to party. If you haven't, if you don't know that yet. So let me ask you about that then. St. Patrick's Day. Mm. So yes, go or stay as far away as humanly possible and go no, another time. Because, you know, it's interesting. Um, you know, growing up in Ireland, St. Patrick's Day was not uh, like a festival time. St. Patrick's Day was a holy day, and all every play uh, the pubs and everything were closed and the parade was the big thing and all of the american bands would come over you know all of the marching bands for the parade right and we would have like real shamrock on our lapels and um, and we would go all go into the city center for the parade but it was not like a crazy day so it's been over the years because it was there's more fun here in like chicago new york boston savannah right. Um, there was, but now Ireland, Dublin, of course, they're not going to be outdone by the Americans. So they right, have, right. <laughs> in true Irish fashion, have, you know, now there's all these uh, festivals and celebrations and everything going on. And stepped up. They stepped up. Yeah, right? they sure did. That's they funny. Sure did. Yep. So we had the chance to go to Belfast while we were there. So not a lot. I think a lot of people don't think about going to Belfast or the north. So what do you say? I'm, I'm going to pick, put a picture in 
um, from there. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, that's absolutely. Is that the fall? The, it's it's where the troubles. It's the. Uh, did you do a black taxi tour? We did. So, what do you think about that? Because I think it's great. Some people say it's controversial, but I found it to be so eye opening yeah, and really a, helpful yeah. for me. It is to, very helpful. Yeah. I think it's very helpful for um, people to understand the history. And I think if you have a, if you do a really good black taxi tour, and I have a recommendation for you too, they will give you it, they'll get it. It's they'll give you both sides. So it's not that you're hearing it from one perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually it, it's even me growing up in Ireland with the troubles, going back and doing that black taxi because it because it was only after that. Uh, the peace agreement I mean you couldn't go up to Belfast and walk now it's you wouldn't even know when you drive over the border anymore it's right. amazing yeah um, and actually our tour to Ireland this year is the north it's Belfast and Giants Causeway and Donegal and all that area so we'll be doing that in June next year and I highly recommend it to every the people up there are amazing mm -hmm. and and I do love the fact that they do include that black taxi tour with uh, you know going over all the troubles because so many people died and it's very difficult for people to understand that perspective, you know, because you only hear when you always hear, well, are you, you know, is it the Catholics and the Protestants or the British and the Irish? And there's just, there's so much more to that. So much history. more. And so many people in real mm -hmm. people. Yeah. That were Bobby affected. Sands and the hunger strikers. Like yes. I remember all of those things, you know? Yeah. And it's beautiful up there. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. And if you like the game of Thrones, <laughs> game oh. of Thrones, like there are probably 15, filming sites there too yeah Which, and you know, they were supposed to open up the game of, you know you know oh, where yeah. the Titanic museum is in Belfast mm -hmm. right behind that was where all the filming went on of Game of Thrones and they've made it into a museum oh like a it's studio awesome. tour yeah a studio oh. it was supposed to open in September but it's been of course put off I'd say next year it'll open up that'll be amazing that and the dark be. edges <gasps> up in Northern Ireland yes we went there and again because of the popularity of the show mm -hmm. it was not mm -hmm. and there were a lot of people so you try to imagine yourself like walking in the footsteps of whoever, but it's tough. Well, <laughs> it's you know, tough. another thing I would say when we were talking about this earlier, if you really want to know kind of the see, you know, the secrets of how to find things, I think that if you're going to Ireland, it's a really good idea to stay in guest houses and bed and breakfasts as well as, you know, hotels and of course a couple of castles. But the locals are really good about giving you tips of, yeah, don't go to that, go to this, you know, like they'll say, it, it, there's there I'm, I'm sure you've experienced this Janine they go out of their way they fall over to help you right yes they're so friendly and and I think that they're proud of where they're from too so they oh, want they to tell you this place or that place and yeah the one thing though my one recommendation is remember just because someone tells you that a bus <laughs> or a boat or something will be by they mean eventually yeah not like here where every 15 minutes we hiked, of this. no no we hiked to the gap of dunlao which is seven yeah. miles i mean it's and it's gorgeous yeah. and it's beautiful and it was one of my favorite favorite experiences but we hiked because someone said there'll be boats on the other side <laughs> to take us back sure. they meant eventually eventually yeah. like sometime during the day <laughs> How long did you wait, or did you end up hiking back, or did you? No, no, we ended up waiting, and luckily we only had to wait about an hour. So then it just was a coincidence that someone had ch like charted a little boat to come the other way, and we're like, "Hey, hey, yeah, <laughs> can we yeah. go back with you?" So it was so funny. Um, so let's do like one more picture of you before we wrap it up. Oh. Enjoy. So. <laughs> That was another sunny day. Um, actually, that might have been the same day. We went to um, Blarney. We went to kiss the Blarney Stone. Oh, and nice. I, I, you've been to kiss the Blarney Stone, right? I have not. Oh my goodness! Got to go, Janine. It's such a great experience. It's it's a bit uh, nerve wracking, but it's really great. But the guy. So the, it, there's a there's the when we're at the castle that you have to walk up the steps to go and kiss the Blarney Stone, and then there's a folk park. Um, on the grounds, there's the, the famous poison garden. I don't know if you've heard of that, but they have all of these um, herb, like all of these plants that were used to as poison, you know, like belladonna. Oh, wow. this kind of, so they've got this beautiful garden. And I don't know if you recognize this is a, is it's actually a, um, 
would it's made out of metal but it's a, an irish wolfhound and you never see our irish wolfhounds and you know there there's a legend about coo cullen and the irish wolfhounds and stuff and they're a massive dog um and that's a replica of a, an irish wolfhound so as, when you're kissing the blind stone you have to like hang upside down right yeah. and don't have any air pockets secure no. all things because the, they have these <laughs> So I'm, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but yes, you don't have it. What well, you're committed once you're once you go up those once you get to the top, you're committed because right. there's no back. You have to go around, and the guys are not letting you pass. <laughs> and they they hang you literally. You hang upside down, and I'm they sure hold your feet. Picture of that, yeah. I thought I was sure you had probably done that already, but I have a picture of myself and Durbel kissing the Blarney Stone. They actually hold you by the waist and they, you're, you're like, you're kind of going, oh, okay. They're like, put your hands behind you and you're doing that. And then they just pretty much grab you and hang you upside down and put your face against the stone. <laughs> oh my and gosh. Then, now I'm sure after COVID. Things yeah, they'll be wiping it off. <laughs> You're not getting away. There's no half measures. Like Dervla was trying to pretend and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You're here. It's like, well, you know what? If you're there, you might as well do it, right? And it's exhilarating. And our clients absolutely loved it. And just the grounds. And then they have like an area where they have um like Evoca Weavers is another uh, like beautiful hand woven blankets and all these uh, scarves, gorgeous stuff. And they have Blarney, of course, the Blarney woolen mills and all of these handmade souvenir, you know, right. like the Aran sweater and all that stuff that you bought. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. So we have to end because, oh. <laughs> and we can talk again and again. We'll have to come on, You'll, we'll have you on again. But thank you so much for coming on. So tell everyone where they can find you. They want to find you on social media. What, where can oh, they? Oh, absolutely. Well, my name's Emer Coglin, and uh, we're on Facebook, Celtic Hearts Travel, Instagram, Pinterest, you name it, we're on there. And um, look for the two classy lassies. Yes. And they, you know what? And if you are thinking about a trip to Ireland, they are your lassies. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, that was stupid. But anyway, so, <laughs> so, Thank you again for coming. And just a quick thing, um, you know, Amy and I launched a new group, Facebook group today called Women with Wanderlust Tribe. Uh, check it out. I put the link in the comments if you want to see what it's about. And we'd love to have you join us. So we're taking we're taking next week off uh, just for an early Labor Day celebration. But the following week, we will be visiting India. So mm -hmm. we're super excited about that with actually someone in India. We may have to record it. It's a couple of things, logistical things, but we're super excited to talk about that area of the world and I, it's another place that I've never been. So I can't wait to hear more about it. Oh, I love it. And I love what you guys have been doing. It's great. Oh, thanks. Thank you, Emer. Yeah, and thank you, Janine. So thanks for stopping by Janine yeah. and Amy's Travel TV Live. We can't get we can't wait to get back out into the world. Mm -hmm. We know brighter days are ahead and on the horizon. So keep dreaming about travel and finding joy close to home. Mm -hmm. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye.